Yes, we are here. Ebony Excellence is in the room. Uh, today we have an interesting, driven, passionate, focused queen on deck. And uh, we're going to get right into that right now. What's up? What's up, queen? How are you doing? Hi, I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Hi. First time to the I Give a Damn Jam platform, as well as the Anacostia Art Center, the Hive, where we're shooting this. Um, we want you to uh, get to know your name is... India Thibodeau. Mm -hmm. And uh, let us know what you give a damn about. Oh, I give a damn about a lot of things. We're here for it. Yeah. We're here okay. for it. We don't know. So I'm know. a driven, passionate entrepreneur, and there's a lot of things that I do. So one of the things that I care a lot about is housing right. and our people owning, being homeowners and, and home ownership. Yes. Um, I care a lot about the planet and uh, climate change and how the world is evolving as a result of the climate change that we have now and the things that are happening in the world that we can see every day in the news, but people want to deny that there exists climate change. Mm -hmm. And uh, I care a lot about people getting life insurance policies and leaving a heritage for their uh, next generation. I care a lot about that. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. yeah. And I care a lot about mental health. Is that something else that I do? Uh, being a part of a mental health center and uh, working with uh, clients that have uh, mental illness. And I care a lot about that because in our community, we don't talk about it enough. Mm. You know, we ignore it. We say, oh, grandma just crazy. Right. But grandma right. has a whole diagnosis yes. that y'all not paying no attention oh. to, that she's now passing on to the next generation, and they don't know. And then it goes on and it continues. So we have to start not labeling people but kind of trying to figure out what's really going on mm -hmm. and then getting getting care you yes. know it's important to uh if you're down and that continues for weeks and weeks on end to talk to somebody get a therapist they'll get you some help yes because you know what that's that's so important yes that's what so it's important. the soundtrack of my life at this stage of uh being an og and Hip hop, uh, mm -hmm. you know, people have to. Some people have to, you know, figure out what they want to come up with to be in a popular drive. But for artists who aren't signed, that can be independent. We could just speak from our heart. Mm -hmm. And for me, I've been thankful of that because you know the industry has been, you know, always capitalizing off some of our best stuff yeah. and not wanting to put the money into the conscious artists who are helping the, the people grow with that good vibration stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I thank you for uh, uh, basically coming out and giving the um, the four one one on what's been going on. What would you say is your uh, the catalyst that got you started with such a good entrepreneurial drive? Um, so I actually went to college. I graduated with a degree in paralegal studies and I worked in a law firm. And the one thing that I did was I took a class in the evening in real estate. And I thought, wow, I can actually be an entrepreneur because I didn't even know anything. Like in my family, Everybody is educated. My parents are PhD doctors, mm. and you know, it's you got to go to school. That's right. just what that's you got to do. Right, right, right. And nobody was talking about you can have a successful business and be an entrepreneur. Mm. But when I took that real estate class, that was it for me. Wow. Uh, I left uh, the job. Mm -hmm. Were your folks mad pissed about that? <laughs> No, no, okay, not really. Okay. I started uh, selling houses and I never looked back. 
I've been selling houses for 25 years. Ooh. And Big then up, as up. an entrepreneur, you just keep going, right? Because exactly. you, exactly. you know, things happen in real estate. You don't have any control over market conditions. You don't have any control over the interest rate, right? So there's the highs and the lows of real estate. Yeah. So when it became low in 2008, I said, oh no, mm -hmm. I got to do something else. Exactly. So I went to auctioneer school mm -hmm. and I set up an auction company. And I did auctions, real estate auctions, for about five years doing that, 2008. Excuse me, were you one of those 50 dollars <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Okay. And so I did that for a while, um, still with real estate. And then I went and got my life insurance license, which kind of tied in because we can do insurance for your home, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So you get mortgage protection for your home. And so I did that for a while. And I said to myself, I will never get one source of income again. Yes. Yeah, so the idea, the goal always is to have five streams of income. Five. Five. That's the first on my list. <laughs> yeah. five. 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 I was trying to go for seven, income. but I like seven as a number. Uh, yes, yeah, I like five. seven. You got a plethora of business coming in, so you need a plethora of different streams yeah, of income. Yeah, a minimum of five. So, um, and then after that, a friend of mine said, Hey, indeed, you sell houses, you sell this, you sell that, come sell solar with me. Mm -hmm. And so then I got a solar license because you literally in Maryland, you have to get a home improvement license to sell solar. So I went and took the test. So now I've taken a test for real estate. I've taken a test for insurance. And I took my third license test for home improvement. And <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be excellence right there. Anyway, yeah. keep 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 running running it down. So that solar. Yeah. Solar, so the solar yeah. is everything in DC. If you don't have it, you need to call me, talk to me, oh. because you can get it for free. And DC is one of the non-states, but you know we're trying to be a state. But it absolutely is one of the places that has 100% renewable energy and they have, they want all the citizens of D.C. to get solar by 2032, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. So if, if you haven't talked to anybody, it doesn't cost you anything to go solar in D.C. and it does save you money and it will help the environment. So I got that license. Um, my question is, so when you first made your first career change mm -hmm. from paralegal, mm -hmm. were, were you afraid to jump out <coughs> and just do, or were you just always mm -hmm. like, just go ahead and get it done? Yeah, yeah, so I just knew that I would be good at it, mm -hmm. and so I just jumped, <laughs> yeah, I just did it. And so a lot of skills that I translate into all my businesses really is just people skills, mm -hmm. right? So when you develop people yeah, skills, right. you can translate that into almost Coffee any field, field yeah. in entrepreneurship that's because true. you're dealing with people. You're Most of the time, you're working with people. So if you learn how to work with people, I learned that at the law firm. Mm -hmm. You know, we, I just took the legal part of it and then switch it to housing, and then I switched it to insurance, and then I switched it to solar. And then during the pandemic, when everybody was sitting down chilling, I was on the internet, I said, oh, what can I do, what can I do? And so I got my certification as a relationship coach. Oh. So I do coaching. A lot of y'all out there need help with that. A lot of them girl, right Like here. one stop shopping that was over here. Oh my one God. stop shopping, yeah. <laughs> You're talking this on the wind network. I give a damn about entrepreneurs. I do. Yeah. I'm no a third generation you. entrepreneur on both sides. Yeah. So yeah. for me, you know, being a barber for 25 years, it's been beautiful because mm -hmm. I don't go by the normal pressures that most people have to be with punching in. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to deal with the pressures of somebody saying you fired. I mean, if you're bad barber or stylist, then yeah, you fire yourself. But entrepreneurs rock. Yeah. It's no yeah. ceiling on the money that you yeah. can acquire yeah. you know when you work with nine to five it's like the rich pet you ever read rich dad poor dad mm -hmm. and that's kind of in that same kind of uh way right. but let's go on and, but and let you can develop a mindset once you become an entrepreneur mm -hmm. because i'm not gonna paint a rosy picture like oh, it's no. not always oh, yeah. so yeah. easy you know you do have to have a lot of faith mm -hmm. you're stepping out in faith and so it's like you walk by uh, what's it faith, not by, by faith but not by sight, oh, right? No, so you don't know if you're gonna get the sale, oh, but you're gonna go, oh, right? Yeah, you're just gonna you keep going. Yeah, by faith, and not you by don't sight. stop. You oh, don't stop. Yeah. It's a lifestyle. You it's, have to be committed it to it. 
And so once you're there, though, you don't ever want to go apply for no yeah. job and sit down somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> you do your, your time. You will. Yeah. Uh -huh. You will. And say, mm -hmm. say for us who are doing the, the, the we know who we are, mm -hmm. but we're like supporting it or, you know, doing whatever it is, but it's still like the, the open to the universe, mm -hmm. open to God, you know, to, to what directions can still go on. Mm -hmm. Late yeah. bloomers can happen every day. So if yeah. you like anything that the sister is saying, where could they find you? Um, so I am on Facebook um, and DSL Solar on Facebook. Um, I'm also on Instagram. I think it's ET Homes for Sale on Instagram. And uh, if you want to check out our mental health center, we are located in College Park. Uh, you can go to our website. It's etwtherapy.com. Um, I'm the executive director over there and I uh, help, you know, run things at the therapy center. Mm -hmm. But um, it's etwtherapy.com. So um, I, just, I just really want to encourage everybody out there if you're thinking about entrepreneurship business. Because what I've noticed with a lot of people is that they don't recognize the benefit mm -hmm. to having your own business. You can write off your cell phone, your gas, all the things that you do for your business, whereas at your job, you cannot. Mm -hmm. And um, what if something happens to your job? Then what do you have, you know? Exactly. What are you gonna do? So it, to me, just makes sense. Even if you sell Mary Kay, <laughs> just, yeah, just add something. Do something, yes. yes. I mean, I, was, I, yeah. I definitely was talking to you about an analogy earlier where, uh -huh. Uh, when you go down to certain places where they're fishing, mm -hmm. and you see like folks who have like one fishing rod, but you see some folks that tie up like three fishing rods, mm -hmm. and they're getting that from different ways. And you really do have to have you get multiple bills, mm -hmm. so create multiple, multiple streams, streams of income. Streams of income. And yeah. Five, 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 five different kinds. You know yeah. I know something new today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please five hustles, and you can go in and out of any of your businesses. And, uh, you know, money will always be flowing. And just believe in yourself. Use your gifts. God has given us all gifts. Oh. And uh, what I try to, you know, tell my children is that, you know, use your gift. Use your gift and try to make money out of your gift, right? Mm -hmm. Try yeah. to make money. So if you have the gift of speech, if you have the gift of writing, yes. whatever that is, figure out how you can turn that into a business. And hey, make money. Man, that part, that part, and that part, and that part. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Y'all well, should be inspired you. on Yes, you. indeed. Thank you for Sorry. it. Visiting us, you yeah, now yeah, are like in partnership. We done, you know, we done lovingly uh, connected at Uptown Tacoma. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you and the Queens was out doing your thing, but oh, we're yeah, now like yeah. continuing a different chapter now. So you yeah. know how to get with the Queen. She's giving you the information. Please use it. Someone could really benefit from a lot of what she talked about tonight. So y'all stay okay. tuned. I give a damn jam. It's back. Coming back. All right. Welcome to Win Network, where we are looking to create the win-win in business. Have you ever had the problem, once you've shot some great photos or great footage, that you needed someone to edit it? Look no further, we got your solution. Editors are us. Leave it to the experts for all your post-production needs. We are here for you, 24-7. Post-production is our specialty, but we shoot, produce, direct, consult, and train anyone interested in digital storytelling and any form of video production. Music videos, documentaries, live streaming, promotional videos, corporate events, weddings, you name it. We can bring you broadcast quality production at a very affordable price. Come check out Editors R Us. Back to I Give a Damn Jam, entertainment hour like no other. We are here with this young wise brother who has inspired me to holler at him. I had to holler at him. I rolled up in the Anacostia Art Center and I saw him 
working with a lot of youth, uh, doing some extremely constructive, productive things. And I want you to get to know about this young man who's repping in the 202 and giving some kids in the streets something constructive to do. What's up, bro? Hello, everybody. My name is BJ. I'm the uh, production manager of a theater company named Children's Legacy Theater. Um, we are involved with the community, uh, specifically Ward 7 and Ward 8. Um, where we bring a lot of youth in from the DCPS public schools and train them on how to actually conduct uh, theater procedures like, you know, um, the sound and lighting department, stage management, directing, mm -hmm. costumes, um, you know, so on and so forth. And what we do, yeah, photography most definitely. <laughs> um, and what we do is we bring them in, um, the ones who are really interested in, in, in theater, and we actually pay them, um, you know, giving them a little sum from what we can. Um, every two weeks and we allow them to actually put on a production for the community so we promote everything it's live performances where we actually host um, the performance in various, various different places like the Anacostia Art Center right or the uh, Salvation Army building uh, we got some requests from some schools to actually come out and perform um, right around the block right, right so, up the street yeah so it's, it's a lot of working with the youth and what we do is not only just work with them through theater but we also like to give the youth a voice right so we have them um, you know go through the playwriting and everything where they can sit and write their own plays talk about things they want to talk about whether it's personal life events or they just want to tell their story something they dreamt about they want to make it into a production and they sit down and write it all out and then what we do is we take that we make you know the grammar errors you know everything like that and then we actually produce it in our 10 minute play festival during the summer we definitely need it in, in dc um right now so exactly. you're making a great impact right in the heart of the city yeah. that needs it yeah. because yeah. there's so many uh children that are basically uh, living, living on you know the phone all the time. So to give them something constructive to do and some coins to go with it, I really appreciate that. I've been a beneficiary of those type of programs. So that's when I spotted you. I was like, let's 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 chop it up. Let's you know what I'm saying I've done my share of things here. And I'm seeing you do your thing and uh, down here at the Salvation Army, I'm seeing it up close and personal. So I know it's not an easy task. Uh, so who would you say is the person that inspired you to get into this this line of work, man? Uh, actually, Miss Jackie Carter, my executive director, okay. um, she actually kind of brought me on while I was in high school um, in ninth grade. Um, I was actually dropping my girlfriend off at the time to, you know, the Children's Legacy Theater, um, which I had no, you know, clue about. All I knew was the theater program, and I was like, you know, theater's not for me, you know, in high school because everybody's so scared about getting on the stage. Okay. Um, Miss Jackie actually brought me in. Um, she saw something in me. She said I had a face for acting or something like that. So, you know, she See brought that. me in. <laughs> to do uh, the play for Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Um, and I was Martin Luther King, and my uh, friend in high school was he was Malcolm X. Um, we did that play, and from acting, I was like, you know, acting's really cool, I can really get into it, because I know my uh, family, they were trying to get me to audition for other things. But I was like, I kind of want to move around a bit, you know, and see what else the theater has to offer. So I kind of moved to Sound and Lights, you know, backstage, and I stuck with that over the years. Um, and I had to leave, you know, to go to the military for a while. So I came back after, um, you know, AIT was over. Um, came back and, you know, came to teach um, lights and sound to the youth. And then from there grew to, um, you know, uh, the position I am at now, which is the program director uh, up, or program up. manager. Yeah, so yes, I've been indeed. trying to, you know, navigate my way there. And then, you know, she's just been teaching me, teaching me, teaching me as time goes on. So. Talking about um, the queen right here. <laughs> yes. Oh, salute queen. Yes, indeed. Give him flowers while alive. Yes, love while that. alive. He gives a damn. Because you gave a damn. So yeah, do you, do you think um, it helps you a lot uh, that you grew up in this environment so you, you're able to connect with the youth? Yeah. Like a lot of a lot of uh, managers I hire, they're normally from Maryland and Virginia and, you know, other places that aren't revolved around Northeast and Southeast where a lot of this, you know, grimy stuff happens. And me being raised in it, I kind of know how to, you know, move. I know what they're going through. So when they come to me with certain problems and certain issues, I know how to kind of guide them through it. And then especially teaching them a code switch because everybody goes through everything. But if, if it's your first time going through it, you don't know how to handle an issue. So what I'll do is I'll help them redirect by teaching them about, you know, the code switch and what, how to act outside versus inside, how to leave emotions at the door, continue work, 
And then that way, some way, some point, everybody knows when you get a job, you find that one friend that you always, you know, can vibe with and that'll cheer you up. And you'll forget all the issues that you ever had. So you got to leave the emotions at the door, have a good day at work. And when you go home, then you're like, dang, I, I forgot to be stressed out. You know what I mean? Like, so I help them um, in that type of way. You, hold on, you said code switch. Mm-hmm. Now, that's a, now that's a whole <coughs> vocabulary word for us today. Code switch, what is that about? So code switching is basically um, two things. So you can act two different types of ways. Code switching is basically knowing when to switch to which different mode, basically. So say you outside, you with your friends, there's a certain way you want to talk, but when you get around with somebody who's maybe your employer or your boss or somebody that you, you know, show acceptable, you're going to switch and act accordingly. It's just like how you with your cousins or how you act with your grandma. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It's two yeah. different things. So that's what you're teaching them young people over there. Like code switch. So when did, when did, when did, when did, when did it come out? Code switch. Code switching was something I kind of just learned. Like, it was just like one of those words where you never actually learned it, you never actually heard it anywhere, but it just kind of clicked, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? It just came about. So you're t- teaching these youth there. What age group are you working with? So we're working with uh, age group from 14 through 17. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes, you know, they're 17, they had a birthday, it's our 18. We still keep mm-hmm. them on, you know, through the projects and everything. We don't like to just let people go. We'd like to uh, explore more opportunities, like we'll have connections, some people to come see us if they have job opportunities, you know, um, if people are going off to college or um, you know, not wanting to go to college, we always throw out the opportunities that we're able to. Um, you know, we actually just did a, a production called Break Every Chain that um, that was to promote opioid awareness, opioid and fentanyl awareness in the community. Um, so things like that where um, a lady in North Greenland has uh, funded us for that project, it gives them opportunities to actually meet people like that, like from the Department of Behavioral Health and then see like, okay, these kids are really into it they really want other people to know they really want to support the community and make it you know better so that right there is how maybe in the future she'll offer us some uh let's get some kids in for uh internship process or you know something along those lines maybe in the future you know it's always hopeful on the people that we meet um but we have gotten like other people like uh, rodney minor who does our videos and things for us and he's been asking us for you know internship kids but that might be able to help him with things um so it's like any any opportunity we can be able to get them you know uh, Mm -hmm. based on the people that we meet based on what they're actually trying to accomplish and everybody has their own goals even as youth you know which is what we also want them to um to figure out which is why we have them you know prepared to do resumes uh coming this uh upcoming january 2024 we're actually starting a tutoring program for them, for the kids who are, you know, a little bit struggling in school. So we're going to help them academically as well as, you know, still pay them. Um, then we have our other project, Robert Small, is actually coming up in December. It's going to be on December 16th, mm-hmm. 15th, 16th, and 17th um, this Same year. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, you know, it's going to be right down the street here at the uh, Sol- hmm, Solomon G. Brown Community Center at the Salvation Army on the third floor. The address is 2300 MLK Avenue Southeast, uh, Washington, D.C., zip code 20020. Um, that's going to be at 6.30 p.m., all three of those dates. And then everybody who wants to know more about CLT, purchase tickets, you know the upcoming events, they can go to our website at the Children's Legacy Theater 8.org. And theater is R-E instead of E-R because that's the way you know we spell it our title. Um, but they can also visit our Instagrams, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok. Everything is always Children's Legacy Theater. When you type those three words, we're going to pop up. Um, so that's just to give people knowledge on what's actually going on, showing pictures and videos of our students um, in practice or going outside and interacting with the community, you know, being relevant in the community, not just through theater, but through other things like um, we're developing um, community service events where a CLT can come out and participate. Like I've seen uh, Anacostia Park down the street has a lot of events. Uh, events where they can, you know, go and clean up the park. Like a lot of people sometimes throw trash everywhere, mm-hmm. but that's cool. The community steps in and, you know, things like that. CLT is in the future going to be a part of things like that once we can 
Whew, excuse me. <laughs> Get gather those right. systems up, you know. Um, see uh, which youth are really interested in the community because that's what we want to do is get the youth that are strongly at the head of it because you know we want, once we catch them that early mm -hmm. you know it's more to make a positive impact of rather than being out on the street this is what I did this is my route that I went mm -hmm. these are the opportunities I found and they can bring that back to you know the community that they live in. I love yeah, it. Definitely, I love it. Definitely. You definitely. Man over here. Mm -hmm. this, definitely, yeah. Yes this is uh, what we are thankful that is going on for the future. Um, passing the baton to wise young folks like this and giving them, you know, the energy and the battery in their back. Salute to you and uh, your your legacy. Uh, connecting with the, uh, the the generation here and um, he's getting busy. You know, you, you take care of one that might take care of thousands. So when you give a damn, you know, it's it's, it's like the universe reciprocates it in other different ways. So it makes a, it makes a big difference. Um, I'm hoping I'm hoping for your program to to spread out the ages and capture a little younger, a little <laughs> older, because um, now, because I do a little bit of that, he knows. I do a lot, a lot of things. Yeah. But like, um, you know, if you guys can get partnered with MPD, Beat the Streets, they do a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, because they kind of know some of those youth that's troubled, but most of the time they're troubled because one, just like our Ebony sister said earlier, the mental health, um, it's a serious thing in yes. history, and some of them are just geniuses, and they just don't know how to, how to use all of that. And maybe when they're in school, they're bored, but yes. they don't know they really an actor, or you know. Yeah. So I love what you guys are doing, and um, I hope you you all are able to get the like you said the funding and grants for internships and yeah. the funding to do more with like you know more just more community just, stuff. Just like, yeah, because yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, I love hearing that. Yeah. And they always try to be an actor. Like, acting is not me. I don't want to look all foolish on the stage. Mm -hmm. And then give them about two, three weeks, and they actually in it. And yeah. they really so, get involved. Because acting is really not as, as what they think it is. You yeah. know what I mean? They think it's going to be you just clowning on the stage. People going to be laughing at you. But really, it's really like a transformation. Like, you, mm -hmm. you being something that you never was. Mm -hmm. And then you actually are developing yourself because once you can understand another person it actually helps you understand like yourself like once you actually have to be somebody else you know what i mean yeah. it's like a um it's like a reflection type of thing you know um once you gotta transform into another person like you gotta look back and say dang well this person might have received things a lot better than i have received things in my own personal life this person understands a little bit more it's a little bit calmer now that I know that I can be this person, maybe I should, you know, change up a little bit to develop myself. Are you so, acting as well? I do a little bit of acting. Um, um, <laughs> I've actually I mean, you really, you really expounded on it. I want to see some of you, you know, some of your I wanted them to do the Martin Luther King show. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Can you give us a little taste of that? Um, shoot, that's, that's years ago. <laughs> oh, either we way. put them on the spot. Listen, listen, listen. Either way, we love that. We're gonna wrap this up because you know we okay. got like more that we want to be able to see. So again, give it to them uh, with the Instagram because that's I know a lot of people check check out the show and check out all of the different things you just gave. So one more time for the, the folks out there in the back. Right. So you're gonna be able to find us on all social media platforms, some YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, five six for any information that you want at all based on upcoming events, how to get your kid registered. Um, things like that. They can also come into the building, um, you know, just show up. Hey, I heard about this. Um, I, I give a damn jam. Yes. Um, at the 2300 MLK Avenue, that's Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue, Southeast, uh, Washington, D.C., 20020. Um, 202, baby. Yeah. 202, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, this is what we're doing. Have any excellence. Y'all go tell somebody about this. Run, tell that. You know what I'm saying? Edutainment hour. I give a damn jam. Yes. Y'all stay tuned. We got a jam getting ready to pop off.